Hello, I'm Jen Weber, the Marketing Manager here at Acumen, and today I want to walk you through the new features included in the latest update to the Acumen Software Suite, version 4.1. So the full Acumen Suite now integrates with Phoenix Project Manager. This means that Phoenix users can now benefit from the schedule diagnostics capabilities of Acumen Fuse, the project risk analysis in Acumen Risk, and the acceleration features in Acumen 360 using their Phoenix schedules. We've also added multi-database support to our Primavera P6 web integration and expanded and enhanced our integration with the other tools. So let's move into the Diagnostics tab. We're all familiar with the ability of Acumen Fuse to slice and dice the project by project time phase. So I can see here I've grouped and sliced the project by year. I can then go back and evaluate my metrics for each of those time phases. With the new 4.1 trend analysis feature, rather than looking at phases by time, I can now do a side-by-side -side comparison of my project updates. So you can see here I have my initial plan, my one month update, my six month update, and my current schedule all showing side by side, which allows me to go back and look at the metrics for each individual snapshot. Additionally, I've grouped my activities by their status so I can see how my work is progressing across each project update. So in my initial plan, I have zero completed activities. In my one month update, I have three completed activities. In my six month update, I have eight. And my current schedule, I now have 15 completed activities. Additionally, we've now allowed you to look at the project score in both the phase analyzer here, as well as the intersection analyzer. So by adding this score, I can now see that within my current schedule in the year 2010, I had a score of 14%. However, in my one month update in that same year, I only had a score of 5%. I can easily chart my project score. So now I can see how the score changes across time or regroup my activities by any common field or, or resource or WBS to see the score for those individual intersections. We've also added the ability to evaluate logic sensitivity on your project. This means that I can evaluate how sensitive my schedule is to a delay. So I can select any activity, such as secondary long leads, define the amount of delay or the amount of duration I would like added to that activity, and then see how that delay impacts a key milestone such as project finish. So let's run the analysis. So what this graph is showing me is that for the first 156 days of delay, or if I add up to 156 days, there's no impact on project finish. However, at 156 days of delay, there's a seven day impact on project finish. And I can look at this at any point on the chart. So when I add 356 days of delay, I get a 264 day delay on project finish. And as you can see here, I can create a new schedule scenario at any point on this graph and then use that scenario in my scheduling tool moving forward. So similar to the logic sensitivities test, we've now rounded out the DCMA 14 point assessment with the critical path test. So let's look at my current schedule. I can now see I have the traditional 14-point assessment checks that have been infused since the very first release. And now you'll see check number 12, the critical path test, and I can show that either the, this group of activities has passed or failed that check. You can do this by any group. So if I wanted to look at my control account manager, I can see how each control account manager is performing against the DCMA's checks. So this helps me be sure that my schedule is ready to go through a DCMA audit or helps me pre-assess my schedule before submitting it to that audit. So let's move on to Acumen Risk. So one of the new features we've added to Acumen Risk is the Risk Advisor. We're all familiar with how I can manually go through and set the uncertainty 
assignments for each of my activities or a group of activities using these sliders. However, with the new Risk Advisor, I've made that process a lot easier. The Risk Advisor provides recommendations for uncertainty assignments based on a given criteria. So I can look at schedule quality, where the Risk Advisor will say any activity with a schedule quality or a few schedule index of greater than 75% it will make a recommendation that that activity be flagged as conservative. Similarly, if a activity is scoring less than 50% um, for the few schedule index, then that activity will be recommended to be an aggressive uncertainty assignment. I can also make recommendations using historical performance, so the risk advisor will go back and look at past performance and recommend uncertainty assignments based on that. We can look at an individual metric or even a field from within my schedule, including standard fields or user-defined fields. So let's do an example using schedule quality. So you can see here in the recommendations column that the risk advisor has gone through each activity and made a recommended uncertainty assignment. Looking at the color, I can see here that it has recommended that my concept group of activities be flagged as very aggressive. So I can assign that summary to all of the children activity. But looking at construction, I see that although it's flagged the summary activity as conservative or made a recommendation that this be conservative, there are different recommendations for the individual activities within that construction WBS. So now I can either assign that summary suggestion to all of the children activities, or I can use each individual recommendations to do the uncertainty assignment. So this really speeds up the process of loading a, you know, a large schedule. By using these recommendations, it also helps you to quickly identify where, where your uncertainty assignment should be. If I wanted to go back and evaluate what the risk advisor had suggested and say I wanted to make a few changes, you're completely capable of doing that as well. So we've gone through and risk loaded most of our schedule, but let's go ahead and finish it up. And at this point, I can use the new ability to build a schedule scenario based on either my uncertainty inputs or I can run my risk analysis and build a schedule based on any P date. So I have the option to do build scenario based on these inputs, which will give me a schedule option, which takes into account my uncertainty assignments, or I can run my risk analysis and build my schedule scenario based on any p-value. We've also added new options to the Acumen Risk Risk Register. So previously, you were limited to the option of adding threats or opportunities as risk events. We've now allowed you to include weather modeling or calendar event or risk window modeling to your risk analysis. So let's look at calendar events first. So a calendar event could be something like a hurricane season. And if we knew that for this project, hurricane season was from the month of June through the month of November, I can define that time period. And then I have the option to map my hurricane risk event to the areas of the schedule where it might impact. We can also add a risk window. So this could be something like if I had a frozen canal that may happen and may impact my, my schedule, I can, but I'm not quite sure when the canal is going to freeze. It could be as early as December or it could be as late as February. I can go in and define the minimum, most likely, and maximum time periods for that risk event and then map that risk event to the areas of schedule where it might impact. So you have two options with these kinds of risk events. You can either have the activities split during the risk analysis, or you can prevent them from splitting. And what this means is if I had an activity in the month of May that might be impacted by hurricane, but that activity wasn't set to finish until June in my hurricane season, I have the option to say that the activity can either begin work in May 
stop work during hurricane season if, it if the hurricane season hits and then resume work in December, or I can have the model move the entire activity until after the risk event window is over. We've also revamped the risk event mapping feature to let you quickly see which activities or which events have been mapped to each part of the schedule. So looking at concept, I could quickly map my hurricane activity to concept and I see that new, that new mapping here along with the details of the activity and the event. So that is the new features included in 4.1. Let's do a quick review of what each tool includes. So in Acumen Fuse 4.1, we've added the logic sensitivity analysis, the trend analysis, the DCMA critical path test, that check number 12, as well as the ability to look at your score in both phases and intersections during your diagnostics tests. In Acumen Risk, we've added the ability to do weather, weather and calendar-based risk event modeling. We've added the new risk advisor to help you with your uncertainty loading. We've refined the risk mapping feature to make it easier to see the risk maps. And we've added the ability to use risk factors in your risk events and create P schedules based on either your uncertainty inputs or your risk analysis. Throughout the product suite, we've added the integration with Phoenix Project Manager, multi-database support for P6 Web, and enhanced our integration with Dell Tech Cobra and OpenPlan. That concludes our presentation on the new features in Acumen version 4.1.